This is the circuit board of a Daikin Mini Split Air Conditioner's indoor unit. I thought it would be helpful to explain it to you all and discuss the potential issues that might arise with it and how it functions. The design of this circuit board is somewhat different compared to the circuit boards of other air conditioning brands. So, the first piece of information I'll give you is about its thermistors or sensors because the thermistors in Daikin Air Conditioner's circuit boards are a bit different. The pipe coil thermistor installed inside the evaporator is standard in this circuit, just like in other air conditioners. However, you won't see any wire for the room temperature thermistor in this circuit. So, where is the room temperature thermistor located in this circuit? Let me show you where it is installed. When I look at the front panel of this circuit, which is currently open. Here, you will see, TH1 written. You'll notice a component that looks like a Zener diode, but it is not a Zener diode. This is the room temperature thermistor used in Daikin's circuit. This thermistor is responsible for sensing the room temperature in Daikin air conditioning units. If there is a fault with the room temperature sensor, you will need to replace this thermistor in the circuit. Only then will the room temperature thermistor fault in this circuit be resolved. Now I'll give you some more information about this circuit. Some people might already know about this, but for those who don't, it will be new information. I'll now provide details about the intelligent eye sensor that is installed on this circuit board. You might be wondering what this intelligent eye is. Daikin widely uses this intelligent eye technology in its air conditioning units. Let me show you what the intelligent eye looks like. This white colored sensor you see here is called the intelligent eye. It's a function that needs to be activated using the remote control if you want to use it. Only then will it work. What's the benefit of this function? The advantage is that if people are coming and going in your room, and sometimes the room is occupied and sometimes it's not, this function helps the unit save electricity. Let me explain how it works. If you use this function and there are people moving around in the room, the unit will operate at the temperature you have set. However, if the intelligent eye does not detect any movement in the room for 20 minutes, it will adjust the temperature to save energy. For example, if you have set the air conditioner to 20 degrees, it will cool the room to 22 degrees instead, effectively increasing the temperature by 2 degrees to conserve energy. Now, if the intelligent eye sensor doesn't detect any movement in the room for 40 minutes, after initially adjusting the temperature down by 2 degrees, it will also reduce the compressor's speed. When the compressor's speed is reduced, it results in the advantage of consuming less electricity in the unit. So, if your Daikin air conditioner has this function, be sure to use it. Now let's understand the circuit board and the system it contains. In this circuit board, the black wire is the line wire, the white wire is the neutral wire, and the red wire is the signal or communication wire. When electricity passes through the black wire, it goes to the fuse. Ahead of the fuse, there is a protection device installed, which is a ZNR or zinc oxide varistor used to protect the circuit from power surges. The ZNR typically burns out or short circuits when high voltages pass through the circuit. Along with this, the fuse also burns out. Then, a capacitor is installed to filter voltage spikes in the circuit. After this, a line filter is added to further filter out voltage spikes. Following the line filter, there are two more capacitors. These capacitors are also installed to control voltage spikes and surge voltages. After these components, a PTC sensor is installed in the circuit. Positive voltages enter through the pins of the PTC sensor, while the negative voltage follows this trace onward. Next is the rectification circuit. This bridge rectifier is installed here, which converts AC voltages to DC voltages. These two points are the AC pins. From these pins, we obtain our DC voltages. However, as soon as the voltages are converted from AC to DC, a boosting capacitor is installed here. This capacitor boosts the voltages, meaning it increases them. After the voltages are increased by the capacitor, we get 320 DC volts at these two points. You can see that I have placed some switching ICs on my hand. These ICs come in different brands and packages. Various companies use these switching ICs to create the SMPS for their circuits. In this Daikin circuit, let me show you how its SMPS system is designed. Its SMPS circuit works like other SMPS circuits, but none of the ICs I showed you earlier are used in this circuit. Instead of a switching IC, a MOSFET is used in this circuit. Its number is K2718, and it is an N-channel MOSFET. This MOSFET is used to switch on the SMPS. Here, instead of a switching IC, look at this complete circuit from here to this side is installed. If I show you the backside of this circuit board, the entire circuit used here is for the SMPS in place of a switching IC. In this switching IC, there are many components, such as diodes, resistors, timers, and many other elements installed to make it function within the circuit. This entire circuit functions as a switching IC in this Daikin circuit. Along with it, a chopper is installed. 
Additionally, there are many other interesting components in the circuit. A completely different IC is used for communication. In all the Daikin units I've seen, this type of IC is installed for communication. So, I've given you a broad overview of this circuit and its components. If you are willing to support the channel, you can buy me coffee, for that, visit Patreon. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.